What's My Line? Brought to you by Geritol, the high-potency vitamin iron-rich tonic in liquid or tablets to help you feel stronger. And now, let's all play What's My Line? New York lets meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the charming actor Peter Cook. Opening tomorrow night in New York at the Barrymore Theater in Chin Chin, Arlene Francis. And I would like to say that Peter Cook is one of the four reasons that Beyond the Fringe is the smashing hit that it is on Broadway. Deservedly so, Peter. Well, thank you. And uh, now a gentleman who has just returned from a glorious lecture tour of the Midwest, and we're glad he's back with us, Mr. Bennett, sir. Nice to have you back, Dorothy. Thank you, Bennett. And now will the real John Charles Daly please step forward. Well, it goes without saying that this is a, a fine night for us because Dorothy is back. Dorothy, it's been yes. said many times, but it's a joy to see you sitting there again. Thank you, John. It's wonderful. And just to show you, Dorothy, that nothing has changed, and so that Peter understands that life can be difficult too, we'll celebrate your homecoming by telling you to put your blindfolds on. <laughs> this they don't like, but we have some rather special surprises for you tonight. We'll also have a famous mystery challenger before the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first contestant after... All right, now since we're up to some tricks tonight, panel, I must ask you right away if the blindfolds are all in place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes sir. They are. All right, will our first contestant enter and sign in, please? Here. Do you know how we keep score on what's my line? Yes. Fine. In that event, we can let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, we can tell you that our guest is uh, self-employed and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Uh, <clears throat> has your name been in the... Uh, papers of recent date. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, is it possible that those of us on the panel uh, that are interested in sports might find you among the sports columns? No, it is not. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Would your name then be more likely to appear in the entertainment section? No, not directly. Uh, let me have a small conference. Then if we want to be fair, oh, I, don't, sure. I don't think we can rule out that uh, you would not consider it unlikely that our guest name might appear in the entertainment section. So rather than give you a flat no, we'll give you a qualified yes, all right? Would it be, uh, it would not be because you appear before the public in some entertainment or other, is that correct? That's right, correct. Uh, have you anything to do, possibly, with the arts? Yes, yes, sir. Would that, would that art possibly be literature? Yes, sir. Are you the author of a book? Yes, sir. Golly, here's where I get myself into trouble. <laughs> was, uh, is, uh, was your latest book a big bestseller? Yes, sir. Was it a novel? No, sir. Two down a date to go, Miss Kilgallen. Was it nonfiction? Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, is it still on the bestseller list? Yes. Um, did it cost over five dollars? Yes, ma'am. Are you a lawyer? Yes. Are you Louis Neither? I'll be goddamn. <laughs> Well, I would Mr. say Neither, offhand. I read that twice. I would say offhand, Dorothy, that'd be the last rest you get in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I must say, Bennett, you opened the door and got us on the right track. It is indeed a bestseller. As a matter of fact, Mr. Neither, I must say that its uh, great sale has, has uh, sort of raised a question in my mind. Do you think that perhaps the drama of life is just as, as exciting as the drama of um, fiction? Well, without striking any modest postures, the reason for the receptivity of my life in court is due to the fact that real court dramas are far more exciting, more enthralling, and filled with turns of twist and plot and surprise and humor than any fictional court drama that was ever devised. Well, it certainly it seems so. I think we not should... The, not, not the, when I'm on the jury, they don't seem to be that way. When you're, on, when you're in the case, yes, but I think the usual case that a jury gets can be just about as dull as anything that comes along. No, it would have taken a, a genius to spoil this material, and I don't qualify. <laughs> well, I must say, my life in court is, of course, a series of, of fascinating cases, one right after another, one of the, the great cases affecting uh, certainly Bennett and, and um, Arlene and Dorothy and Peter and me. Is that your defense of, of uh, Quent Reynolds, or rather your plaintiff's uh, representation of Quent Reynolds? It was a fascinating, but every one of the cases in my life in court is fascinating. Uh, can I ask you a question which I hope is not out of order, since I asked it of a, of a lawyer? Uh, Only I'm a, our indiscreet never answers. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I hope this is not an indiscreet question. I will go on the assumption that any lawyer approaching a case uh, accepts that there may be a witness who wishes to be somewhat less than truthful. Uh, is there any yardstick or, or personal measurement that you create by which you feel in yourself that you know that a witness is not telling the truth? Well, every lawyer, trial lawyer, develops special antenna and sensitivity to the mannerisms of a witness in order to detect that he is lying. For example, if a witness holds his hand up in front of his mouth before he answers, and he does that significantly each time that you come back to the same subject matter, it usually means, I wish I didn't have to say what I'm about to say. <laughs> Or if he looks up suddenly for inspiration to the ceiling when uh, some question is asked, of which he should be able to answer with great felicity, whereas he's been as answering other questions quite easily, that may be a fertile ground for cross-examination. No crossing of your legs each time a certain subject is raised, and particularly the eyes. A person will very often be very assertive in his answers, and nevertheless his eyes will show great uncertainty. So the lawyer develops various signs, uh, emotional detection of the witness's veracity. Good. Now, Bennett, remember, don't cross your legs. Don't look at the ceiling. Don't put your head in front of your mouth. We'll make Bennett a good witness. May I say, I think my life in court is exciting, sir, because you're an exciting counsel and because Thank you're a very good writer, too. Thank nice you, to have had you with us. Thank you. Quite a remarkable publishing record, Bennett. I think that the, the hardcover has been going, and now the paperback is out. And uh, I this think is... the hardcover edition has already sold over a quarter of a million copies. I'd heard as much as a million. It's an exciting book. Well, an exciting start too. And, and uh, let's see if you can do as well with the second challenger. Will the second contestant enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Janice. Man, is that right? Yes. Is it Miss or Mrs. Mann? Miss. And where are you from? Miss New Man? York City. New York City? All right, Miss Mann, these folks I think probably are all familiar. This is our panel. May I present it? Will you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score on what's my line? Yes, I do. All right, in that event, we'll let the audience here and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Well, we can tell you that Miss Mann is self-employed and deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with mm -hmm. Peter Cook. 
Um, good evening, Mr. Madden. Could I um, carry your product easily? You might. Um, is it a marginal issue? Is it um, the sort of weight of product that... Um, no, I think we would have to floor? say in the terms of your first question, Peter, you asked if you could carry the product easily, and the answer to that would be yes, you could carry it easily. Yes. It's not an um, overly heavy product. It's not something which would burn into the ground. I point out, I'm very weak. <laughs> no. No. Um, would I use it in the home? Well, I can think of occasions where if you were exercising that degree of authority, which is sometimes reserved to you under the special circumstances which may obtain on a certain, <laughs> certain, certain occasion, that you might then say properly that you could use it in the home. Five minutes with Louis Neiser. <laughs> <laughs> um, does it apply, does it apply uh, to both sexes? It's not, it's not designed for one sex in particular, I trust. I would say it is, yes. It is. I think we have to give you a no on that. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Is it designed for the feminine sex? Yes. So if you're carrying it, look out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that last remark when I come to think of it. That's a very long one. Is that. it something that uh, uh, is worn? Yes. Would it show if I were wearing it? Most likely. Uh, would it be uh, bought in a, a, a department store? Yes, it could be. Uh, does it uh, uh, cover any territory from the waist up? <laughs> if you call that territory. Yes. Area? Mm -hmm. Indian territory. <laughs> it does? Yes. Uh, would it cover the shoulders? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, Miss Mann, uh, Although it wouldn't cover the shoulders, would it cover something above the shoulders? Yes. It would. Would it cover something above the chin? Yes. Would it cover something above the mouth? Yes. Would it cover something above the nose? <laughs> yes. Well, we're getting up in the world. <laughs> uh, and no more lecture tours for Bennett, either. That's enough of that. Would it, um, have anything to do with either the eyes or the hair? Yes. Well, I'll guess the hair. Has it got something to do with the hair? No. No. <laughs> Three down and seven to go. Miss Jill Gallon. Has it anything to do with the eyes? Yes. Is your product something that is applied in the neighborhood of the eyes? Yes. Is it applied to the eyelid? rather than to the eye itself? You're too smart. <laughs> do you have something to do with false eyelashes? Yes. Do you make them? No. Peter? That makes it four down and six to go. She doesn't make them. Um, she doesn't comb them out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she can't juggle with them. And yet she has to do with them. Um, you can't wear them professionally. I'm fishing, aren't I? Um, <laughs> do you sell them? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Actually, I'm going to put all the cards them. over. Do you apply them? Apply them fits on? and styles, which is why I threw all the cards them. over. Yeah. Fit, styles them and fits them. That's the proper and thing. Apply. And, apply. and apply them. Miss Mann has her, has her own shop, uh, Janice Mann, uh, Styles in? Styles and applies our lashes on 1st Avenue, 54th Street. There you are. Bennett could use anything along that line. I'm a simple, guileless man know whether or not a girl is wearing false eyelashes. How do you know? Yeah. You're not supposed to know. But I'd like to. <laughs> Hold them, dog. <laughs> Just... Test them. That's all you can do, Bennett. There's nothing else to it. Well, thank you very much for being thank our you. guest. I think we gave them a little trouble anyway. Thank nice you. to see you. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which... 
The panel once again has to blindfold itself. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Right back on. Good. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Bennett Sir. Is uh, show business your principal vocation? Yep. <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Do you have anything to do with music? Yep. Mr. Cook? I know, sir. Have you ever appeared in a Western? <laughs> no. <laughs> One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Do you appear in the uh, hotel uh, uh, club? <laughs> Nightclubs? Yep. Mr. Sir? Is there more than one of you up there? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> Two no. down a day to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, have you ever been to my house? Yep. <laughs> Mr. Cook? Have you ever appeared in a comedy film? Nope. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Are you appearing at the present time in New York in a club? Yes! Mr. Sir? Sounds like who's appearing in the present time in a club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No conference has been in. Is, uh, is the place where you're appearing a big hotel? Yes! Miss Kilgallen? Are you Carol Channing? <laughs> <laughs> John, Mr. Hilton told me he gave me a brand new shipment of diamonds, and Dorothy wasn't here before, and he told me to cast my bread upon the waters. So could I give you a diamond, and you. one for dear Dorothy, because she looks so wonderful, and one for for you, Peter Cook, You'll and You'll be over Arlene. there in a minute, Carol, and, anyway. You, oh, can, I, you can give them all. That's and Mrs. Sir. <laughs> In the audience, you'll get it. Carol, yeah. actually, Carol was nice enough. She was with us last year, and uh, I still have the the loot from last year. Do you? But you have been, uh, in the interval, I know, doing something that must have been great fun. You've been with George Burns, haven't you? Yes, I have. Well, I, I remember particularly because you, you did a, a program for the president. Oh, that's right, we ah, did. See, I have got a good he, memory. He I and Gracie are flying out here to the Waldorf oh, to great. see me. Oh, that's so, fine. Yes, they're going to Well, come. I read all your notices this week, and they were great, and they should be. Weren't they lovely? They were delightful. Oh, I was so but happy. sounded like they'd all been written, written by your relatives. Yes. That's nice. Do you have friendly relatives like that? No, mine never would do that for me. Oh, I think... I'm getting a lot of trouble with Carol. But thank you so much for coming to see us, oh. and I know you're going to have... Lots of fun. Oh, John, I'm glad to see you all again. Arlene is in Chin Chin. I'm coming to see you. Well, <laughs> you ought to see. I must say that, that Miss Daly and I have seen Arlene in Chin Chin, and, and uh, I've always known that she was a great lady and a great actress, but she proves it again. She just is magnificent in Chin Chin. Oh, yes. Eileen, come and ride the, the new gold escalator with me. I miss you. At the Waldorf. I'll be over. Will we'll you do that? Yes. This gets a little confusing. Wait a minute. Let's say, where is the gold escalator? Oh, it shoots you just like a laundry chute right up into the Empire Room. It's the most marvelous thing, isn't it? It's all gold, Dorothy. Wonderful. Solid? Uh, yes, I was the one, Mr. Hilton. <laughs> the only kind. Carol, thank you, you so The only much. kind. Yeah. Lovely to thank have you. Thank you, John. <laughs> Well, I've got to admit, you've done very well so far tonight, panel, and we'll all be 
back with another contestant after this word from our alternate. Lord. And now to meet a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Annette McBride, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs? Miss. Miss McBride. Where are you from, Miss McBride? Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Yes. Well, nice to have you with us. May I present our panel, Miss McBride? Will you join me over here now, please? Do you know how we keep score, Miss McBride? Yes, I do. Fine, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Miss McBride is self-employed and deals in a product, and we'll begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Is the product useful rather than a luxury product? Mm. Yes. Well, both. Both. Yeah, I, I <laughs> would say this only on the grounds. I think it has a utilitarian quality to it, Dorothy, but I think if we were to give you anything but a no answer, it would mislead you, because it really is a luxury product, although it has utilitarian use, right? right. Mr. Cook? Do you think I use it? No, I don't think you do. That's two dollars eight to go, Miss Francis. Is it a fairly expensive product? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. McBride, I'm sure you're familiar with these little gadgets in Texas, aren't you? Is the product that you handle something that would be more likely to appeal to the female sex than to the male sex? Yes. Is it something that a girl might wear? No. <laughs> not at right. That's four down. Six to go, Miss Kilgallen. It's not something that you'd wear. Not that uh, a girl... No, I think Bennett's question was, is it something that a girl might wear? And to that we said no. Uh, is this anything that anybody or anything would wear? Yes. Would it be an animal? Would it be a dog? Uh, something for a dog to wear. Is it something other than a hat? Yes. Is it um, uh, something that is useful but fancier than necessary? Mm, yes, I would say so. Uh, does the dog wear it above the waist? Yes. <laughs> it does. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, above, oh, sure. Above the front paws? Above the front paws, yes. Right? About, uh, mm, yes, yes, if it yes. were standing up yes, like yes. this. Um, is it... Um, but if he were standing up like this? Yes, above the paws. Well, now, where does your dog, when he stands up, put his paws? <laughs> Puts it like this. Well, I guess we could say it was above the paws. Well, is it in the neighborhood of the neck? Mm, yes. yes. Is it some sort of fancy dog collar? No. That's uh, five down and five to go, Mr. Cook. Am I right in assuming it's not earrings? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> and it's not a hat either. No. And it's not a muzzle. No. <laughs> Contact lenses? <laughs> Six down and four to go. No, I'm going to put them all over because actually we... It? It's well, it's, it's a coat, actually. Right. What uh, Miss McBride do is makes coats for dogs. <laughs> St. Francis Dog Togs. Is that right? That is St. Right. Francis Dog Togs. Well, John, if it's above the waist, it must be just like a little bed jacket. It's above and below the waist. Well, I haven't got the waist on the dog straightened out yet, though, Dorothy, so that I'm, I'm a little bit lost there. But it's a top coat. It's a top coat. But <laughs> Mr. Bright, thank you very much, and nice to have you with us and watch my life. Once again, Dorothy, it's wonderful to have you back with us, and it's a joy to say good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, John. It's wonderful to be back. Come again, Peter. Good night. Oh, good night, Arlene. Good night. Good to have you back, Dorothy. And you, Bennett. Good night. Good night to everybody I met this week. Good night to you, John. Good night, Bennett. And thank you all for being with us on What's My Line? What's My Line is a CBS.
CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. This is Johnny Olson speaking. Two million American Cancer Society volunteers are on the march against cancer. Help conquer cancer by giving generously when one...